the discussion, the part of the dialogue that we are looking at in today's gospel, uh, it, it takes place right before Jesus is about to be crucified. Um, we're actually still in the Easter season. This is the sixth Sunday of Easter. And um, I, I think that one of the geniuses of the, the church here, the lectionary, is that even though we're still in Easter, we begin the Easter season, of course, with the events of the crucifixion that we may be following. And as we end out the Easter season, only one more week of Easter left, we are already again talking about the events that lead up to Christ's crucifixion. And I believe that's symbolic, and symbolic of the cyclical nature of God's redeeming and God's forgiveness. God is always forgiving. It wasn't just a one-time action. God is always forgiving and always redeeming. This begins, uh, if you love me. But don't, don't, don't you hate that? If, if you love me? Norman? Norman, if, if you love me, you, you would have brought me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before church, like I asked. <laughs> oh, really? He said, well, I guess I see where I stand with Norman now, don't I? And, and um, let, let, let's, let, let, let's see, I'm sure, I, and has anybody ever said that to you? If you love me, you would. Uh, dare I ask, have uh, you ever said it to somebody else? Oh, I know, if you love me, you take out the garbage. <laughs> um, if, you, if you love me, you wouldn't use such embarrassing sermon illustrations. <laughs> if you loved all of us, you'd get us out of here quickly because we know there's only one place out of this. So, so Jesus begins his discussion. If you love me, well, actually, actually, he doesn't quite say that, because when I looked at it, it, it bothered me too. It, it really did, it bothered me. If you love me, you would. And, and that's a trick of translation. So, so I, um, I went back and I, and I looked at it, and, um, and what I discovered is that when it's written in its original language, it's, um, it's just a little bit different. It's in a present continuous Tense. Present continuous. So that although it would be much sloppier, much sloppier in English, a, a much better translation, a more accurate, more faithful translation would read a little more like this. To love Jesus is to keep his commandments. Now it makes a little more sense, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's a little bit less, it's a little less whiny. Uh, if you love me, you know, What does he mean by that? What I want to do this morning, uh, just a little bit, 
categories, they're not the only categories, um, not the only categories, but there are a few that I would commend to you because they may shed some light on this concept. I'd like to direct your attention now to the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, reading verses 48 and 41. And it goes like this. The man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 41 goes on to say, Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. And I think that's a clue for the first way in which Jesus loved people. To love Jesus is to bring about healing. That's our first category, to bring about healing. Now, you may say to yourself, well, that's all the time for Jesus. I can't cure a guy with leprosy. But this, maybe not. But there's something you can do. Notice what Jesus did there. He reached out and he touched that person. He reached out and touched someone who was untouchable. A person with leprosy was an outcast from society. You may not have such a gift as to be able to cure leprosy, but I submit to you, we can all reach out to those whom society has marginalized. We can all reach out to those whom society has said, no, you're no good. So, point number one, to love Jesus is to bring about healing in the world. Part eight, one through three. During those days, another large, large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days. They've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on my home, because some of them have come a great long distance. I'm reading the old past verse 3, but his disciples answered, But where in this remote place can we get anyone enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground, but he take the seven loaves and give him thanks. He broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people, and they did so. Do you notice the similarity in the story? Jesus meets the lover, and our text tells us he had what? Compassion. He sees these people, he sees these churchgoers, he sees these faithful people, and they've been sitting there for three days, and he says, you know what, I have compassion on these people. I need to feed them. Point number two. To love Jesus is to feed people. To love Jesus is to feed those who are without. There's two verses, 14 through 16. And um, it goes like this. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith, but no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but there's nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? To love Jesus is to feed and meet the needs of those who are hungry. Now we come to our, our next example. And uh, you're probably going to like this one. Matthew 21. Yes, it's a tour of the Bible today, folks. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. You like this because this is kind of a What's the, what's the proper way to say this? This is the kick butt Jesus. This is the kick butt Jesus, you know? Jesus goes into the temple and he sees these guys and they're, they're, what is some crooked game? And he basically goes up and he turns the table over and he drives them out of there. Well, you may ask, why is that, why is that loving? Why is that loving? I will tell you that 
is uh, now to a cross. Jesus is now to a cross. And as he is now to the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. To love Jesus is to forgive even when something seems unforgivable. So we have this list. Jesus says, to love me is to keep my commandments. And Jesus says, well, my command is that you love one another as I have loved you. And how has Jesus loved? Jesus has loved by healing. Jesus has loved by feeding. Jesus has loved by correcting the wrongs. And finally, Jesus has loved by forgiving. Luke 23, verse 43. After Jesus says, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. There are two men crucified next to him. One of them says to him, this is actually, um, I'm going to read from verse 40. Actually. It's the bottom of page 1590. But the other criminal rebuked him, don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, for a lot of reasons, that's been one of my favorite stories this year. I keep coming back to that. Jesus gives this man, Jesus gives this condemned man, Jesus gives this man who has only a few moments to live, hope. To love Jesus is to bring hope into the world. Now that's the list I made. You can probably think of others. You can see how some of this overlaps. But once again, to love Jesus, to heal. To love Jesus, to feed those who are in need. To love Jesus, to correct the wrongs. To love Jesus, to forgive. To love Jesus, to give. Jesus goes on to say, well, in a little while, you're not going to see me anymore. But I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a comforter. Well, the Greek word there is, 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 is parakeet. That word translates to, literally to, the one who stands beside to assist. How's that? The one who stands beside to assist. That's the Holy Spirit, folks. The one who stands beside us to assist us. Jesus says, He will give us, and He describes it another way. He says, I will give you the Spirit of truth. Numa, Numa, Alethea. Numa, Alethea is the Spirit of truth. And then he says something fascinating. He says, the world does not know this spirit of truth. The world does not know this spirit of truth. Why not? Because, think about what I just said. All of this business, all of this business that Jesus tells us, keep my commands, love as I have loved. Any students in history here? Students in history? Anybody? Kind of, sort of? Okay. I will bet. Let me use that. Let me just decide it. Anybody here to politics? Anybody here to politics? No one is going to admit it. I, 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 I'll, I'll admit I'm a student of history. I've, I've, read a lot of, I've read a lot of history books. I've read a whole lot of history. Great. What we need to do to solve our economic woes.
that is the way the world is going to be transformed. That is the way that God is going to transform the world. One person, one life, one soul at a time. That's our call. Love, says Jesus. Love as I 